Just last year, the Vatican declared that today, May 29th, was to be the feast day of Pope St. Paul VI. This day was chosen as that was the date of his ordination to the priesthood in 1920, exactly 100 years ago. This date I am privileged to share with him as it is also the anniversary of my ordination. And coincidentally, May 29th was the birthday of John F. Kennedy, whose funeral then took place here, of course, in the cathedral. Paul's birth name was Giovanni Battista Montini. He was born September 26, 1897, near Brescia in Northern Italy. Son of a lawyer, young Paul was a sickly child, but he inherited from his book-loving mother an aptitude for reading. Because of his weak health, his seminary preparation was conducted mainly from his home. He continued his study, however, in Rome and worked in the Secretariat of State before serving briefly in the Nunciatur in Warsaw in Poland. Back in Rome, he continued in the Vatican Diplomatic Secretariat for three decades. He also served sort of as a chaplain to anti-fascist students in Rome. He taught diplomatic history, and he became an assistant to Cardinal Eugenio Pacelli, who of course then was the future Pope Pius XII. These were not easy times because of the rule of Mussolini and then the Nazis in Rome. But Montini was very active during and after the war in overseeing the plight of refugees and those affected by the conflict. In 1954 then, he was sent as Archbishop to Milan, where he was concerned with pressing social problems of that sea and the need to repair the terrible damage caused during the war. His staff was initially concerned as he arrived with some 90, 90 crates of books. But he was to throw himself for the next decade into the revival of that huge and very important archdiocese. Meanwhile, newly elected Pope John XXIII named him one of the first new cardinals of his pontificate and he gave him a prominent place in the preparations for Vatican II, the Second Vatican Council. Following Pope John's death, Montini was then elected to succeed him on June 21st, 1963. He took the name Paul, imbued with that saint's evangelization efforts, and he promised to continue the council as Pope John had intended it. He presided over the subsequent sessions of the council. Notable actions then involved the establishment of a permanent synod of bishops, a declaration of the Blessed Virgin Mary as mother of the church. That incidentally will be a feast celebrated beginning of next week. Subsequently, he was confronted with the colossal changes wrought by Vatican II and the challenge of steering the church toward a balanced interpretation of its decrees. On the one hand, there were those who resisted the changes, while others pushed the process to such a degree that serious disorientations occurred. He directed changes in the hierarchy and supported promotion of Christian unity and ecumenism, evidenced in the establishment of a relationship to the Orthodox Patriarch, Athenagoras, and the Archbishop of Canterbury as well. And Pope Paul set a new trend in foreign travel for a pope, 
visiting the United Nations, where he pleaded for peace, and also India, Colombia, Fatima, Uganda, Australia, and the Philippines, where he was nearly assassinated by a crazed knife-wielding assailant. Pope Paul's encyclicals were progressive while seeking to avoid dangerous innovation. His probably most famous and controversial encyclical, Humanae Vitae, in 1968 on birth control and marriage, provoked such bitter debate that he was forever after saddened and weary, and weary also. Other crises included the descent of a group of priests led by Archbishop Lefebvre and the kidnapping and murder of his good friend, former Prime Minister Aldo Moro, whom he had known since Moro was a student in Rome. And then Pope Paul died of a heart attack within a few months, soon after on August the 6th, 1978. Pope Paul's 1975 historic apostolic exhortation, exhortation is a teaching document, on evangelization, entitled Evangelii Nunciandi, or the evangelization in the modern world, as it's sometimes known, became the favorite church document of Jorge Bergoglio during the latter's early years in Argentina. Its great purpose was to reconcile eternal church teaching with the diversity of cultures and evangelization. Pope Francis, not long after his election, described it as, quote, the greatest pastoral document ever written, unquote. In the Holy Father's biography Austin Avery has noted it was to be the underpinning of Pope Francis's own Evangelii Gaudium, namely with the insistence that there could be no evangelization without proclaiming justice, peace, and human liberation. Thus, I can well understand why at a huge mass at St. Peter's in October, a couple of years ago, in the year 2018, Pope Francis was happy to declare this predecessor of his a saint. And at the same time when Archbishop Romero and others were canonized. So today we ask this new saint, Pope Paul VI, to pray for us. <laughs> 